Hi, my name is Arianna and today I want to show you how I paint a scene starting from a photo. So I took this photo in Nolan Park in London, which is close to where I live, and it has a nice Japanese garden in it. I chose to use a photo as a base for this one as it helps a lot with having a perspective in place and some base values. As you can see here, I sketched on top of the picture, keeping most of it, but editing the details here and there where I save it. So I decided to add two gates instead of one, as it helps a lot giving a sense of scale and depth to the scene. The colors of the photo really don't match what I have in mind for the scene, so using an overlay layer on top of the picture, I start painting my color palette, which plays the scene in a more sunset kind of mood. So this picture was taken on a casted weather, because this gives me a base of ambient light that becomes easier to be manipulated later on. So here I go on painting the scene and change the details here and there. It's fine to change the photo where it suits your needs and your scene. So as I said before, the picture gave me a good base for values, but sometimes I want more contrast or less depending on the readability. And as I go on, I prefer to keep a black layer on top with a blending mode that allows me to keep my values and readability in check. I wanted the scene to be about the relationship between human and animal, a spirit animal, more precisely, so I started sketching a girl and an author. I add some details here and there, but I try to be careful not to overdo it. And keep in mind that human eyes see more contrast and details as things are close to us. Atmosphere and distance have a role in how we see background, so I choose those to have less details and flatter values. Sometimes I get a bit lost painting the details as the painting starts to come together. Be careful not to jump on those too early, as it can be counterproductive. If the base is not solid, you can go towards a lot of rework. Also, most of the times, if the painting is readable, there's no need to overdo it. Once my base is done, I decide to paint my lighting and because it's sunset and the sun is probably very low, I paint long casted shadows using a bluish color on a multiply layer. And this is why choosing a casted weather for my picture was really helpful because now I have the power to place my light source and my shadows and I can set the mood that's good for my scene. For example here, I wanted my otter to glow in the dark, so I can paint my foreground in the shadow. I also decided to paint some light in, in the mid to the background, to help me flatten more the background values, and this helps me a lot in giving a depth and a sense of distance to the background. So I finally decided to paint my otter in, as a glowing spirit, but 
placing her on top is not enough. I need her to be a part of the scene and her surroundings needs to be influenced by her. So I start painting the light that comes from her on the environment in the foreground. So going on in the end, I changed my choice for the human character and instead of a young girl, I go for a little boy. And I decide to place him in the background for both storytelling and composition. This way, I take advantage of the depth of the scene and by contrast with the author, he is placed in a lighter zone. The stairs also get my eyes from the author to the boy and helps my storytelling in my scene. As you can see here, I also paint away part of the leaf coming from the tree. This is because I want to have a clear reading of the silhouette of the boy, which is now taking importance in the hierarchy of the scene. I go on painting some little details here and there, which is my favorite part of the painting, where you see coming it together. So thank you for watching guys, and I hope this has been helpful, and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos. This was also my first time recording my voice for a video, so let me know if you want to see more of this.